Coming up in this FinCast, stumbling upon a catfish that was once the holy grail of the hobby. So, so definitely when I put Kimmy Pure in the system, I saw a, a greater water clarity. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today I want to talk about a Cory catfish that was once so rare it was described as the holy grail of the hobby. Tropical Fish Hobbyist Magazine had an article about how nobody had even seen this fish alive in recent history after it was first collected in Peru back in 1949. Now this was a 2007 article and I'll link to it in the description down below. The fish is not so rare now and I can tell you the reason why. In fact, I had the chance to interview a man who's part of the reason why, at least a small part. Uh, Don Kenyon. Um, I'm an avid breeder of Corydoras, uh, Pistogramma, um, and a lot of South American tropicals, some tetras and such. In my last video, I told you how I went to the All Aquarium Catfish Convention, which was presented by the Potomac Aquarium Society. This was just outside Washington, D.C. You want to go 70? 65 for 70. 65 watts. 65 twice. Sold at 65 dollars. The number 340. 340. If you didn't see my fin cast on the fish auction, you might want to check it out. What a cool way to buy fish. And as I told you in that video, I paid a lot for a fish that I had never even heard of. But on the uh, third floor of the hotel, fish breeders were set up to sell their fish at great prices. And that's where I met Don Kenyon, who actually went to Peru and collected the two saddled quarry cats himself and apparently collecting them is not easy. These are Corridors Weitzmanai, um, collected in the Madre de Dios uh, area of Peru. Um, in a, uh, very difficult fish to collect. They're in st <clears throat> very stony streams. Um, you have to pretty much sneak up on them and chase them into a net. Um, tell me, you know, who's, you know, how many people involved, who's holding that, how did it work? Um, well, this I, I had assistance. I caught all the time we were in Peru. I caught one of these, um, and I had help to do it. You uh, watch for them. You slowly go up river, upstream. You watch for them. They go under a rock. You put the net on one side of the rock and chase them into the net with your hand from the other side. And you just have to be quick enough to raise it as soon as they get into it. Wow, okay, so you caught one. I caught one all the time we were there. Right, so uh, <laughs> you, it takes two to tango. How did you get this breeding population? Um, well, between the, the group of us, we caught um, a lot. The two guides caught most of them. Um, and between all of us, we brought back, I think, 32. This is, uh, this is the second population. The first population that was originally brought back to the United States, um, the, uh, their habitat is gone. It was destroyed by illegal mining. Um, this is a second population, uh, same species, a little bit different color variations, um, but uh, th this one is, uh, I, th I think, a little bit more attractive fish. Fortunately, breeding this fish is easy, and Don has had a lot of success with it, as have a lot of other catfish aficionados, and that's why it's much more common today than it was in that article I mentioned before. Not a difficult fish to breed. They, uh, they're in, in tap water, just uh, in a, a clean water tank uh, with a lot of variation, a little bit of current. Um, just feed them well, a lot of live foods, a lot of uh, different kinds of worms, and uh, a lot of very, very protein rich, meaty foods, um, and just let nature take its course. Use the yarn? Yes, uh, make a, a yarn mop. If you don't have plants in the bottom of the tank, plants will work as well. Um, a yarn mop, uh, just make it out of wrapping yarn around a book and uh, put it in the bottom of the tank, it'll sink and they'll lay their eggs in the yarn. I bought a group of seven two-saddled quarry cats from Don and I brought them back home to put them in my 55-gallon tannin tank. After two hours of acclimation, they were swimming around like they had just found heaven. I mean, uh, the roots, the limited planting in the tannin tank all seemed to suit them just fine. And as Don said, they actually come from a stream that has a rocky bottom so that I'm hoping the pea gravel in there is okay for them instead of sand. Now, 
In a previous video on this tank, I explained why I took the sand out and replaced it with that pea gravel, it wasn't so long ago, on the theory that the sand was upping my pH. Unfortunately, the pH is still higher than I want. It's around 8, and I don't know why, since my tap water is 7.4, but no matter, the little quarries seem very happy, and man, are they fun to watch. Not the least bit aggressive, um, great fish for a community tank, um, a great fish to keep on its own and breed. Because this fish was once the holy grail of the, at least the catfish hobby, there's a ton of information about it on the internet, and I'll put links to some of the articles that I found down below. But if you're still watching right now and you like this fish, you will love that article in TFH, Tropical Fish Hobbyist Magazine. And again, that'll be one of the links. So now I'm wondering if I should try to breed these guys. Uh, I've never been the guy who sets up the fish room for spawning fish. I kind of prefer to watch them and create biotopes, natural types of tanks. But uh, I am intrigued by how easy everyone says it is to do this. And I do have a bunch of empty tanks and filters around. So, hmm... By the way, the Latin name for this fish is Corridorus Weitzmani. It was named for Stanley Weitzman, who was uh, the curator of the Museum of Natural History at the uh, Smithsonian Institution. So a big honor for him. Hey, coming up soon, I want to show you uh, a small cichlid called the Gymnogeophagus el Norte. I also bought a group of them at the show, and uh, they are living in that tannin tank with the catfish. Seems to be a good match so far, and I'll be talking about these little cichlids coming up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please. I appreciate that. If you haven't already, subscribe. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. Just search for FinCasters. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.